Laura and James Laura began unpacking her suitcase and wondered when her husband Sean would arrive. He surprised her with a cruise to the Bahamas to rekindle their marriage. Speaking of surprise, he had only told her about it last night. All she had to do was pack her bags. Sean had cleared some occasion time at her job and informed both of her parents. The only thing she hadn't been able to do beforehand was to call James, her lover. Laura was glad that soon all the hiding and lying would be over. Her affair with James was over. It was time considering the likelihood she and Sean would soon have a child. She was glad, however, that she had managed to have an affair before the baby was born it was a one-off first and last affair to confirm her attraction to other men. Reflecting on it, she wondered why she had agreed to date James in the first place. He was handsome and charming, and the sex had been arousing at first, but the love hadn't been. At one time, she had believed that there had to be an element of love justify the need to have a lover. Now she was forced to admit that it was just lust. The sex was good, but definitely not worth risking her marriage. Thank goodness they'd been careful. Neither Sean nor James's wife, Donna, had found out anything, better to end it now and not tempt fate again. Laura hoped that Sean had been truthful when he'd said he was ready to have children after the cruise. Having children was one reason, though not the main one, for getting married. She wanted to be a mother so badly, mentally, she remodeled the guest room twice once for a boy and once for a girl. The best part of her life was about to begin. She was so happy. The sound of the key coming through the door sent a flutter through Laura's heart. She planned to greet Sean with the tightest hug and the most passionate kiss she was capable of. When the door opened, she exhaled. James, you can't come in. Sean will be here any minute. Get out. Laura, James shouted. Laura, what are you doing here? Donna should be here soon. This is our quarters. Neither of them seemed to know what to do except tell the other to get out. After a few agonizing seconds, James smacked himself on the head and said, Oh, shit. Now I get it. This is supposed to be our quarters, yours and mine. What are you talking about? Don't you understand? They found out. For some reason, your husband and my wife decided to give us a lover's cruise, perhaps as a parting gift to our marriages. No. It can't be. It doesn't make any sense. Sean told me that he had arranged this cruise, and he said he had to meet me late because of one last business detail. He told me that this cruise was a way to strengthen our marriage and prepare for having children. Donna told me the same thing, almost verbatim. Something about the way she told it to me sounded a little off. Now I know why, are you sure? What if they show up? Show me your ticket. After studying the piece of paper, James explained, Look, we're booked in the same cabin, you can wait before you unpack if you wanna see if Sean comes, but I think we're screwed, I'm calling Sean. This must be some kind of crazy mistake. She dialed the number, but got nothing. A second try yielded the same results. Damn it. The phone company must still be updating them. That's why I didn't call you last night. Who told you the phones were down? Uh, Sean. Guess what Donna told me last night when I said I needed to call someone. The phones probably don't work because they cut us off from the phone plan. They knew we'd try to call each other. Uh. That can't be right. I was going to end our affair after the cruise. I want my husband and my marriage. I want to have children Sean's children. Quick. Let's get off the boat. It's too late, the ship has already left the dock. We've got a couple days to get to our first port, I'll disembark there and go home. I'll beg him not to do anything stupid, how will you get home? I'll catch the return flight. And how will you pay for it? With a credit card, of course. So you're assuming our credit cards are valid? I hadn't thought of that, of course, he's not that sneaky. Go to the treasurer's office and see if you can charge anything, I'll go with you and check mine too. Their trip to the bursar's office confirmed James's prediction, their credit cards were declined. They went online and found that half of their joint accounts had been cut off, 
ATM cards could have provided access to the joint accounts had they not been cancelled. The treasurer allowed them to call their spouses but both received a number no longer in service message. So, Laura, how much cash do you have? About $300. You? About $250. It doesn't look like we're going to be doing any side trips. I think we're stuck until the end of the cruise. I assume you have a return ticket I do. What am I supposed to do now? This is gonna be the worst week of my life. How could I have been so stupid? Well, we can enjoy the cruise. No one knows what's in store for us. All I want to do is cry and think about getting my husband back. That's fine. I'll unpack and go see what I can do for free. You don't think we're going to share a cabin, do you? Laura, we've been having sex for months when we thought our spouses didn't know anything. What's so special about sharing a room when they know? Well, maybe Sean would be more forgiving if I told him we didn't share a state room on the cruise. You really are delusional. Good luck with that story. Laura and James shared a state room and a bed for the cruise. Laura agreed to snuggle with James on the nights he stayed in the state room, but no sex. He found another woman who invited him to her cabin for a couple nights. Laura did nothing but eat, sleep, cry, and prepare her speech when she saw Sean. She expressed optimism about Sean's forgiveness. James rolled his eyes instead of laughing at her naivete. Their luggage was taken by bus to the airport. On the way back, they sat side by side. They hardly spoke at all. At the baggage claim counter in their hometown, James saw a man with a sign with his and Laura's names on it. The man said he had been hired to take them home. Once James and Laura got into the car, the chauffeur handed each of them an envelope. You've been served. I thought you were the driver. That too. I was paid to drive you around and serve you. You must read the letters from your spouses. I'll take you both to 1353 Westwood Avenue. That's my house, James said. What about the lady? I was told to take you both there. The answer may be in the letter. In each envelope was a letter with separate divorce petitions. Laura and James, we hope you both enjoyed the cruise. No. If you think that treating the two of you to a cruise was some kind of sign of affection, drop the idea. I, Sean bought the cruise tickets before I even found out about your cheating. They were non-refundable. After Donna and I got together to confirm horn counseling for both of us, I think the term is the same for a woman as it is for a man, we came up with the idea of sending the two of you on a cruise. We needed time to get our affairs in order, pun intended. We have a divorce attorney in common, which would probably be a good idea for the two of you as well, at least it would be cheaper. Getting the letter is the beginning of the 90-day separation. It will allow all of us to get used to not being married to our current spouses. Instead of having four whole houses, we have decided that Donna will move in with me. Laura can move in with James. In case you are wondering, Donna and I have not developed a romantic relationship, not even revenge sex, it's not because Donna and I don't find each other attractive. It's because we don't think we should have sex with anyone else until we get divorced. What a weird concept, not sleeping with anyone other than your spouse. I think I've heard that somewhere before. Oh, yeah, our marriage vows. Or were they just marriage proposals for the two of you? The next 90 days of separation is what we propose to use to negotiate the division of assets. Donna took everything she wanted out of her house. Most of her stuff went into storage. Laura, all of your stuff is boxed up and in James's house. Oh, before I forget, there are some things we didn't leave for either of you. All of the wedding photos and albums have been thrown away. If you need them, you can look for them at the city dump. Hey, you ruined our marriage, it seems like a fair trade to destroy the wedding photos. Obviously, marriage didn't mean the same thing to you as it did to me. Please spare us the excuses from the cheater's handbook. There is no excuse for what you two did, and you did it over and over again. Forget about counseling, at least marriage counseling, unless you both think it will help your future marriage to each other. But there's another thing about whether a cheater who marries a cheating spouse can ever trust their spouse. We know they couldn't, 
which is why we don't need marriage counseling. We do need to talk about asset allocation, we didn't ask for anything out of the ordinary in the petition. Basically, it's 50. 50 for me and Laura. Donna has a prenup that prevents James from getting much. I can see that half is unfair, but I can't expect anything better if we go to court. Is it fair for Laura to get half when she committed a crime and I didn't? There must be more serious consequences for the two of you, or you may not feel punished. If you are not punished, you may believe that you will get away with it again, whether you get married, or marry other people. What punishment to give you two, Donna and I have been discussing for hours. By the way, James, that twenty-year-old Scots you've been saving is great. I'm sorry, but the bottle is now empty. Donna was very creative in her suggestions, however, most of them were illegal. Here's where we left off. Copies of photos, videos, and recordings of the two of you in the throes of sexual bliss will be distributed to everyone in our families, schools, churches, neighborhoods, and anyone else we can think of. I hope this has gotten your attention. What we really want to do is reinforce your desire to settle the terms of your divorce as quickly as possible. Some may see our offer as a threat or blackmail. We see it as an incentive. We have also discussed whether to sue the company you both work for. They don't have a fraternization policy, and we have no proof that your dating took place in the office or while you were working. Too bad we could use the money. I think you're lucky in that regard. Communication All future communication should be done through our attorneys. We both have new phone numbers that only our attorneys know. Our attorney's contact information is listed below. We suggest one to two meetings where we will try to iron out any differences. There are things like insurance, real estate, loans, mortgages, child support, etc. That may be transactions that we exchange rather than split in half. These sessions will be for asset calculation only. We do not expect excuses, apologies, explanations, or requests for forgiveness or advice. Donna and Sean. Laura cried. The loss of her husband and the loss of his future children was tormenting her heart from the inside out. James tried to comfort her. His depression didn't go away until he saw his house. Boxes and boxes of Laura's belongings filled his living room. All the pictures of Donna were gone, as were most of her belongings. The first time he really realized it was real. His wife was gone and he was stuck with a woman he was only interested in when they were in bed. Laura gathered her basic belongings and the clothes she would need for a couple days. Where's the guest bedroom? The guest bedroom honey, if you stay here, we'll be sleeping in the same bed, and I don't just mean sleeping, I'll be ripped to shreds in a divorce. Donna's dad made me sign a prenup, caught cheating. I get nothing. It's your fault. I got caught. You owe me a lot more sex than you've given me so far. What makes you think it's my fault they found out? It might as well have been you. We both thought we were being discreet. I don't know how they found out. Do you? I just know I was very careful. That doesn't change anything. You're either in my bed or out the door. I choose the door. She packed some things and put them in the car. Sean at least brought the car to James's house. What are you going to do with my other stuff? I'll give you 72 hours. Not a minute more. That should be fine. Laura was quiet for a moment and added I regret my role in hurting both of our marriages. I wish you luck with your divorce. After checking into the motel and getting a good night's sleep, Laura got ready for work. She looked forward to the daily routine to take her mind off her situation. The distraction didn't last long. Laura met her best friend at work, Debbie. Debbie found out about the cruise when Sean gave Laura the day off. He told her that Sean and Laura would reconnect in preparation for how children. Laura, since you have almost no new tan, I'm assuming that you and Sean have been busy in the cabin making babies, instead of the wide smile Debbie expected, Laura's face crinkled and she cried. Laura ran into her office. Debbie followed her. The crew story, the letter, and the divorce petition were shown to her friend. Then both women cried. Sean and Donna well, Donna, I think they're already back. How do you feel about what we did? 
terrible and satisfied. I hate to put an end to my marriage, but I love that we didn't let them get away with it, I guess our marriage has meant nothing to them. I feel like I've been fooled my entire married life, well, probably not that long. For all we know, they've only been together a few months, Sean, do you think their desire to change started only a few months ago, I think their undying love for us started dying a few months after the honeymoon, if not, what happened that suddenly caused them to cheat? I understand your point of view. I still can't understand why she did it in the first place. I had no idea she was anything other than a devoted wife and a woman willing to have children with me. Thank God I caught her before we had kids. It would have been a real mess to get a divorce when a child was involved. Do you think James will fight the divorce or not? If I put up a prenup, he'll probably contest it. Otherwise, he'll get almost nothing. He only brought about $10,000 or so into the marriage. Do you think pictures of them going in and out of a motel room would be enough to prove adultery? On the one hand, I really wish we had video of them actually having sex. On the other hand, I think a sex tape of them would burn my brain. The pictures probably wouldn't be enough evidence, at least on their own. I need Laura to testify for it to be a sure shot. I don't know. It sounds weird, but Laura has pretty high moral standards except for cheating on her husband, she could cheat on me, but she could also tell the truth about the affair. Can you talk to her for me? Maybe. Let's play it by ear for now. You handle your divorce, and I'll handle mine. As far as I'm concerned, there's no rush. By the way, how long do you think you can keep me here before you kick my skinny ass out? As far as I'm concerned you can stay here as long as you want. I was surprised at how comfortable I was living with you and how quickly we established a routine. I enjoyed our conversations in mutual comfort. Sean was quiet for a moment and smiled. And upon close inspection, your ass isn't skinny. Thank goodness you noticed. Now I don't have to put testosterone supplements in your food. I've been trying really hard to get you to give me a little lift. Every once in a while, I need reassurance that I'm still a desirable woman. I've noticed, but please don't stop trying. They were both smiling. It was over a month before Sean and Laura arranged to meet. Since James hadn't seen any pictures, he disputed the claim of proof of marital infidelity. Donna's divorce would take longer. Each of Sean and Laura's attorneys came with a list of items to negotiate. Laura's attorney was allowed to go first. My client is asking that all checks and savings be divided equally between her and her husband. She proposes to keep the car and the loan to her. His name should be dropped from the title. In return, she offers to remove her name from the title of his car, and he will take the loan. Both parties will purchase their own automobile insurance. As for the house, she offers to either sell it and split the equity. Or he can buy it back by paying her half of the equity as suggested by a certified real estate appraiser. She would be excluded from the contract if he retains ownership. Sean's attorney responded, We have no problem with those terms. Her husband has decided to sell the house. He will put it on the market within 90 days. What else does she want? Laura's lawyer spoke up. My client will only agree to your terms if your client speaks to her privately for an hour. No, Sean spoke up. Then my client asks that 12 counseling sessions be required. If your client refuses to participate, we will petition for $3,000 a month in alimony and loss of equity in the home. You know, we can get both with the right judge. Sean's attorney told him that local judges like to give counseling and allow the wife to stay in the house, while she probably won't get $3,000 a month in alimony in the house she will probably get a lot more than he was suggesting. The attorney further advised Sean to accept the one-hour deal and be happy that there are no worse demands. My client will give his wife one hour provided she signs the agreement in advance. Sean, will you agree to talk to me instead of just sitting here? Sean was angry, but he agreed. He never lied to me. I accept. When Sean and Laura were alone, he told her at 3.32 will be done. I deserve it, you promised to listen to me. Hu Shan nodded and stared at her. Sean, I have sinned sinned against you and God. I'm not gonna make excuses for myself to you. 
I indulged myself when I convinced myself that everything was okay, I lied to myself and to you and to God. I've cheated. I've broken my marriage vows, I betrayed the person I love most in the world. I deserve to be punished, I think you'll probably agree with what I just said. Sean nodded again. The question is the punishment, is divorce too much punishment? Is a second chance too much? Please imagine a scale, a scale of fairness, as for divorce, put the gravity of my adultery on that scale. It makes the negative side go down, is there anything else you wanna put on the negative side, were there other reasons why I wasn't a good wife to you, besides having a lover, have I ever disrespected you and our marriage? Has anyone ever come to you with negative words about my behavior, or tried to tell you that I spoke badly behind your back? Have I ever turned you down for sex even when I was having an affair? Did you ever doubt my love for you until you found out about me and James? Sean shook his head negatively. Sean, is there anything you can mention about me that can go on the positive side of the scale, the side that can give me a second chance? Do you believe I was an evil slut when you married me? No. You were the most perfect person I've ever known. That's why your betrayal hurts so much, what did I do to turn you into a cheating whore? He had a hard time not crying. Sean, honey, it wasn't you. You were everything I needed. The problem was I convinced myself I wanted more, and I deserved it. What about our family life, did I do anything wrong? Laura, you've become not only my wife, but my best friend. I wanted to hear about your day when I came home. You seem to want to hear about mine. I felt guilty about spending too much of our budget on things for me while you hardly ever asked for money. I like talking politics with you, even though you're almost always wrong. He made them both smile. I loved our conversations about kids and our future. I never ever checked up on you when I was on business trips. We loved each other too much, or so it seemed to me. I know you said it was all your fault, but I can't help but wonder if I took you for granted or did something else that made you turn to James. Now he was crying. Look at the scale, Sean. Is it anywhere close to equilibrium? Do you have any love for me to put on the side of second chances? I know it's hard to believe any promises I make after breaking our marriage vows, but I swear on the lives of our unborn children that I will never betray you again. Please give me a second chance. Sean thought about his choice until he had a headache. Laura, it will take me some time to get that image of you and James fucking in that motel room out of my head. I'll agree to have my attorney hold the divorce papers we just signed on one condition if you agree to testify against James and Donna's divorce. What will I testify about? James challenged the photos of you and him leaving the motel room as evidence that you had sex with him. Legally, he's probably right. You would have testified that you had sex with him, so you lied when you said you had a video of us having sex. Well, there's nothing we can do about it now. Sean, I have no problem telling the truth about this affair. Of course, we had sex in a motel room. I'm sorry I jeopardized two marriages, but I won't lie to save James from punishment. He's not worth lying for, he and I both deserve to be punished. I just wish it wasn't a divorce. I'll tell my lawyer, I'll tell my lawyer. Sean, what does this mean about our living arrangement? Are you gonna let me back in the house? Don is living there now. It's gonna have to wait. I don't wanna kick her out until she has a place to stay, but I also promise to put our house on the market. If you postpone the divorce, you won't have to sell the house. I'd be willing to wait for Donna to leave while you and I spend time together. Maybe we should date again. We're two change people. We need to rediscover ourselves and our relationship. With God's help, we will go back fall in love and be ready to fill our home with children. I'm not sure I can fill a house, but I'd like to. I like the idea. I'll tell Donna. Donna wasn't as pleased with the news as Sean expected, but still forced herself to smile and said, Thank you. When James heard that Laura was, had agreed to pay off his car loan and credit card to compensate him for the loss of his half of the equity in their home. In the current housing market, 
the sale of their home would barely cover the loan and the seller's fees. Alimony was not part of the prenuptial agreement. Sean was puzzled that Donna was being so lenient and asked her about it. I really wanted to burn the bastard. His betrayal hurt me more than anything ever had. Then I looked at you. You were badly wounded, but you couldn't be vindictive towards Laura. Scale of justice made me change my mind. James and I had a mostly positive marriage before their affair. My dad thinks I'm crazy, but I feel much better about my divorce than I would have if I had taken more violent revenge. Thank you, Sean, for everything. She put her arms around him and kissed him passionately. Sean was surprised. The kiss warmed him and challenged his notion that Donna wasn't the kind of woman he should be interested in sexually or romantically. Donna, I it was I'm sorry, Sean, but I care about you so much. Sometimes it kills me that I can't show you how much I care about you. I hope you can forgive me. Forgive you? I wanted to rip off your clothes and have sex with you. It's the horniest I've been since this whole thing started. Damn, girl. You sure know how to kiss, so you wanna try some more. More than anything. The problem is I'm trying to figure out if I can give Laura a second chance how can I do that if we're having an affair. First of all, if we're dating, it's not an affair. Right now, we're both legally exempt from marriage vows. Second, who says you can't give me the first chance at the same time you give Laura the second? Sean's logic and libido competed for control of his body parts. I need time to think, I'm going to bed, alone, and see if I can fall asleep. Sean headed for the bed, the choice of options didn't get any clearer or easier. Donna knocked on the open door, she was wearing a nightgown that became transparent in the light of the hallway. Sean, can I sleep next to you tonight? I'm having trouble sleeping. I promise to be good, please, even though he knew it was a bad idea, he gave in. Okay. If you promise, she slid into bed next to him and put her hand on his chest and her foot on his leg. Donna kissed his cheek. Thank you. It took Sean a while to fall asleep, it was a restless sleep with many dreams. He was on a nude beach with Laura, they were drinking umbrella drinks on a mat under a palm tree. Laura looked at him with lust, she started kissing him and gradually made her way down to his genitals. I thought you were going to be good. Are you saying it was bad? I guess I'll have to practice a little more then. It's not fair to Laura, haven't you heard in love and war? All is fair. I guess I should thank you. That was the best blow job I've ever had. It makes you wonder what else is possible, doesn't it? It does. Seriously, Sean, at least we'll be living together for a while. Don't you want to see if we're sexually compatible? God, you have no idea how much I'd like that. You showed me a little bit of your body, and I stayed horny most of the night. The only thing that bothers me, other than feeling like we should wait until after the divorce, is that you are living with me because your husband is cheating on you. What happens if we find out we are sexually incompatible? Would it be hard for you to stay here? I don't want you to have to move until you're ready. Hell, you're putting my feelings ahead of your carnal lust. She smiled broadly. Damn it, Donna, what am I going to do with you? Doggy reverse cowboy missionary. James relented and stepped back, he was sent a copy of the divorce decree. There was no further contact with him, Sean had an active social schedule, he enjoyed meeting Laura and began to remember what attracted him to her in the first place, she didn't pressure him but made it clear that she was willing to regain his trust in any way she could. Donna had no intention of moving, even though James had left the house he shared with her. Sean told Donna that they needed to talk. Donna, I am extraordinarily happy. I have a beautiful, intelligent, caring woman living with me who has given me the best life I have ever had. I have also reacquainted myself with the woman who was the love of my life for years. She hurt me and I have a hard time trusting her. I've rekindled enough feelings for her to wonder if I'm giving you an unfair advantage when you live here and we have sex, there's a vacant house. Why aren't you going back? I'm not going back home because as far as I'm concerned, this is my home. 
I want to be with you where you and I are together as home. If you think I have an unfair advantage by living here, good for me, I'm fighting for the man I love. I don't understand why you would want a woman who betrayed you and you have a woman who has never cheated on you and never will. I don't want to demean your sense of justice. As much as I hate the idea, I'll move out. I plan to win Laura away from your love. Regardless of our living situation. I trust your judgment, even though you haven't said it, you love me, Sean. I know you do. I'll wait, but I plan on us getting married and having kids. Now let's go to bed for one more night, and I hope you're not going to sleep. Months went by. Laura felt better, especially after learning that Donna had moved out. She was disappointed that Sean had never met her at their old house. Now they hugged and kissed, but there was no sex. She hoped he remembered their time in bed. Most of their time together had been spent reliving good memories of their courtship and marriage. They never discussed her affair. There was a two-week break before Sean and Laura met again. Laura was sure he was going to announce his decision. She felt she had reason to be optimistic. She sat down at the conference room table. Sean was there, but so was Donna. Laura sat holding back tears. Laura, I wanted you both here because I am constantly mentally and physically moving between you. You both need to hear what I have to say right now. Our current situation is unfair to both of you. I don't think it's fair to me either. I have come to a decision. Laura, I have been able to forgive you. Our last time together reminded me of the reason I fell in love with you and how great it was to be married to you before you cheated. I've been tempted to resume our marriage under certain conditions, of course. The problem is I can't forget, while I myself may be willing to risk you remaining my wife, I can't risk the mother of my children being unreliable. As bad as it would be for us without children involved, it makes me physically sick to my stomach to think of what would happen if we had children. Actually, Laura, I made that decision a couple months ago. I've been working on a new divorce agreement ever since. Laura, because of the wonderful years you gave me for most of our marriage, I want to give you a chance to support yourself so you can prepare for how to move on with your life. I have no doubt that you will find a man willing to take the risk and give him children. I have sent your attorney new settlement terms that are much more favorable to you than the previous ones. I wish you the best, Laura. I really do. Sean and Donna got up to leave. Sean, can't you? Her ability to speak left her when she saw the slight bulge of Donna's belly she knew she had lost what she wanted most.